Hey, this is Chris Winters on here, and welcome to the coaching call. Today is May 23rd, 2016. It just, I know I say this every time, but it just seems like we just started 2016, and tax season was just like yesterday, but it was over a month ago. It's just incredible how time flies by. So look, we have a, we have a ton of stuff to cover today, so I want to get through it quickly, um, and then we're going to turn it over to questions and answers that were sent in and then we'll turn it over to questions and answers to live people and if you want to guarantee that your question gets answered remember to always send it in beforehand and then those get put on the slides and they're guaranteed to get answered so let's get going here um what i want to start out with is an awareness test and some of you may have seen this before but if not uh, don't think this is a gimmick pay close attention to this get involved in this it's really important that you do on here. Let me show you what this awareness test is. And uh, we have some important discussion about it in just a moment here. So uh, bear with me. And uh, we're going to do this right here. OK, so, um, well, so what is this? This is, this is an awareness test. This is to test how aware you are. And this is what you're going to be doing. You see the basketball players here. Uh, there is a white team and a black team on here. And what I want you to do is I want you to count how many times the white team passes the ball back and forth between each other. So the white team just passes the ball back and forth to each other, and the black team passes the ball back and forth to each other. And I want you to count the white team only. How many times do they toss that ball back and forth? And I'll give you a hint. I mean, the number is somewhere between 10 and 15. It's somewhere around there. So count how many times the white team passes the ball back and forth. And I'll go ahead and start the video right now. Okay, so I know there's a little delay there between the video and what I'm saying, just a slight delay, but I'll open up the chat box real quickly here, and I'm just curious if you want to toss some guesses in there. How many times did the white team pass the ball? I got one person says 11, need some four, four times, eight, seven, 11, 13, 12, on here four seven and george maybe you might be the only one that can't see the screen so i know that's not on our end i apologize but there's a replay seven seven eleven ten uh, clever phil um six ten eight i counted six eight four twelve thirteen fifteen someone counted 121 you've had way too many cups or something okay so what is the answer on here so the answer is 13. So the count of the about 13 times uh, on here. John got it right. Uh, who else got it right on this end of it? Uh, DC got it right. So we got at least two people that got it right. But this is the question. Did you see the moonwalking bear that went past? There was actually a, like a six foot five moonwalking bear that literally walked right past the screen. Did you see that? So let's replay it. And then this time, look for the moonwalking bear. Here we go. Watch for the bear this time. This is not a trick. This is the exact same replay. Okay. So... Cool. So how many people there? Let's see if they're actually, that's pretty cool. If you've seen that before, it's been played like, you know, 12, 15 million times, but on that end of it, but that's there on that end of it. So you saw it. So now, you know, every time, everyone should have saw the moonwalking bears, the exact same tape on that end of it. So how is this applicable to you besides just kind of a cool little trick on here? Well, it is in a huge, huge way on that end of it. And, um, 
that is, is that just pure awareness itself just allows us to get outside of our own mind and observe it in action. That's what we, that's what that exercise just did. It allowed you to step out of your own mind, especially if you got involved in it, you've never seen it before. You, you feel the emotion of it. You just got outside of your own mind and you observed it in action on here. And the, the huge lesson in this, and this is what I saw this years ago, this came out eight years ago, um, is that many, many times we tend to focus on what we're told to do. And a, a really common topic on that is called group think. And I've talked about group think before on these calls. But in group think, you're, you're told what basically to think about because it's called group think. So, for example, here's some examples of group think. Uh, when you get out of high school, what's the best thing and the most prudent and smart thing to do after that? It's to go to college, right? That's an example of group think. However, every single successful, not every single, but the, I mean the vast majority, like 90% of the most successful people who've made the biggest changes in the world either went to college but didn't finish or didn't even go to college, okay? So this, this, is, this flies in the face of convention on that. But group think tells you, hey, you got to go to college. That's what you got to do. That's the right, that's the safe route to go, right? That's, that's group think. But the reality is, is that in the majority of cases, the vast majority, not all of them, but in the vast majority, um, you're just taught that through group think. And you're going to end up with a lot of debt and probably not a good enough job to pay off that debt in any type of meaningful manner. And that's the reality. On that end of it but even though the reality is there it's blinded by group think it's blinded by what you're told to do i told you to count how many balls passed with the white players and when you focused on that you missed that gigantic bear moonwalking right through the center of the screen when you saw it the second time and you're told you're like you probably said to yourself what the heck how did i possibly miss that and the thing is is that most of us, we have all the answers and everything we need to succeed in whatever endeavors we want to do if we can just remove group think. If we can step outside of our own mind, okay, our own mind that's, that, that's, being, that's, that's being, well, I, I don't want to, well, I, I'm going to say program, but that sounds a little propaganda. It's not propaganda. It's just it's the truth of just being programmed on that. I remember... In college, and, and, and I didn't finish college, but I remember in college, um, uh, my, my mother had passed away. I had no parents. I had no anything, anybody. And I was in college, and I was like, what the hell is going on here? Um, and I got a hold of, in our library, okay, um, this, this kind of outdated book on how to buy real estate for no money down, as long as it was a, a certain type of a VA loan, a veteran's loan, that you could assume the mortgage if the person who had the mortgage would, would give it over to you. There's zero qualifications for this, okay? Um, and uh, there was no, like, the internet back then was not, you know, I'm 50 years old now. The internet back then was not like what it is today. It was just getting started. I mean, everyone, it, back then it was the AOL, the little... Uh, ROM discs, that those were everywhere. It was in that type of era. This is like early 80s and stuff. And, um, and so I didn't have the resources to do that. So I would have to look through public records, which a lot of people are not going to be willing to do that kind of work. And I spent hours and hours in public records. And this was in Appleton, Wisconsin. So I would drive, uh, not drive, sorry. I would take the Greyhound bus down to Chicago to the library there which had these records and I would go through their records on that end of it and this was like on these little film slide things it was like a film slide it's like so antique now and it would like project up on this little screen and I would be going through them and I would be looking for VA loans that were assumable and after about four months of doing this and on the weekends taking uh, Greyhound bus, it was like, I remember, it was like round trip for the Greyhound, uh, Greyhound bus from like 
Appleton to Chicago was like literally like seven dollars and fifty cents. Man, and I remember some of the crazy stuff that went on those Greyhound stations. It was unbelievable. The class of people that 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 <laughs> that use that. I remember. I remember someone had like a hamburger, and someone else kind of came up and said, "Hey, can I have a bite of your hamburger? I'm so hungry." And the other lady said, "No, get out of my face." And then they started fighting about the burger. Like the burger and the lettuce just started flying everywhere, and like nobody did anything. And I was like on the bus. I mean, I couldn't sleep on the bus because I was afraid I was going to get you know, robbed or something. It was crazy. Anyways, that's what I went through. And the end result was this on, on here is, is that my professor said, you're crazy. You're chasing a dream. It's not going to work. Stay focused on your studies. That's a sure bet. Keep going forward. Well, I didn't. Um, and I did. I found an apartment complex. It was an eight unit it was at that time. It was for three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. Was the was was the worth of it? The net worth of it? Get this: the assumable loan was for ninety-eight thousand dollars, and it was it was uh, some lady who owned it, and she was old, and she just wanted to get rid of it. She just wanted. It. She was like, "I'm just tired of this thing." She says, "You want to assume it? Just go ahead." And uh, we got together with her attorney and sign the papers and here I am in college and all of a sudden I own this eight unit freaking apartment building, okay? Now it's not all roses at that point. I had a tremendous amount of headaches after that, by the way, but I kept, I never gave up and I ended up qualifying for, because I did the research, I ended up qualifying for a local government loan uh, to get uh, to get it insulated. So, so the government would actually pay for all the windows and the heating and the cooling and the insulation, which brought the value up to like six hundred thousand dollars, and I owned a mortgage of ninety-eight thousand dollars on this thing. Okay, I sold that puppy. Okay, and at that point, I was pretty much at that time retired, and that's when I took off and I left. And I left for four years. I did volunteer work in Southeast Asia. That's a whole nother freaking story on here. But had I fallen into groupthink? Had I been counting the basketball players in the white team balls, like everyone is telling me, my professors are like, nope, you got to count these, you know, you got to read these chapters, okay, so you do well on a test. You got to count the white team and the balls so you can get the correct answer. I would have missed the moonwalking bear, which was the apartment complex. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so really important. Let me give you one more. I just rant about this for the next hour or so. Sorry about that. So this what happens in this industry, okay? This, this industry is notorious for this um, because they're marketers, and marketers know how to grab your attention and stuff. And, uh, and because we are basically, you know, we're all sugared up. And, you know, you take something like, I'm just going to go off a little tangent here. I apologize if you're doing the replay and just fast forward. But we're all sugared up, okay? We're all sugared up both, in, and it distracts us. So if you take, if you take um, a whole pile of white sugar versus one whole Snicker bar versus one piece of whole wheat bread, which one breaks down into sugar the fastest in your bloodstream? The pure white sugar, the Snicker bar? Or the whole wheat bread? Which one? Go ahead and type in the chat box. What do you think? It's the whole wheat bread that does. And this is a, this is a fact on here. And we're, and see what happens is, and this is true with all wheat. You shouldn't be eating wheat. Um, and so what happens is that it raises your insulin level. It gets you high. It raises your, your insulin levels. And you get all hyper. And you don't have the same attention span. And then you combine that with like Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat and all these other little instant boop, 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 boop. We just got all bop, 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 bop. And then, the, and then the diet that we take in and eat, which is basically a whole bunch of sugar and crap and fructose, corn fructose and stuff. And it just, and we're just distracted. We're just constantly distracted. Like just, just like some little kid on here that's just like, oh, oh, gotta go over here. Gotta go over here. Gotta do this. That's all on here. That's you're going to stay in group think like that because group think is going to control you at that point. Uh, and you need to cut that crap out of your diet so you can focus better and focus on what the larger picture is here. 
and not focus in on all the all those goddamn shiny objects out there okay i'm just telling you the truth some people don't like my tough love but then well sorry i'm just i do it because i care um on that and you're going to get a lot of distractions out there i'm just telling you i'm telling you to stay the course here what i'm providing for you is something that actually freaking works okay I, i've never promised anything overnight it's not what i do Okay, I work my ass off, right? Okay, I, I drive down, I, I take a Greyhound bus, feel like I'm endangering my life, going down from Appleton to Chicago every freaking weekend to get something done when everyone else says I'm crazy, okay? But the, but the persistence and the vision pays off. It does it here. There was a support ticket that came in the other day and somebody said, I'm contemplating about getting into Call Zoo. By the way, I'm shutting down Call Zoo after this, this this little launch thing. We have enough members in. I did this in 2013 and closed it up. I'm going to close it up again and we're done. But so anyways, we've got um, I have somebody coming in on support ticket and they're like, um, one of my staff shared this with me because they, they know I get a chuckle out of it. Um, and if that person's listening to this call or whatever. There's nothing against you. It's just the whole, this is an example of a group think type thing. And that whole, uh, based on the diet that we eat and all the distractions that we have, it just feeds into this. We can't focus on a goddamn thing. So the person comes in and he says, um, you know what? We've had some pretty good luck uh, with uh, one of our lead gen sites. And, and uh, it took us about what did he say, three to four months and a whole bunch of, you know, private blog networks, PBNs, before we started actually ranking. And now we're bringing in $2,000 a month on this one site every single month. And I'm just wondering, um, I don't want to wait that long. So I'm wondering if your course will help me speed up that process. And I'm like thinking to myself, you had to wait three or four months. And now for the, probably the rest of your life, you're going to get $2,000 a month every month for this. And you're like looking for a faster way to do it. Otherwise, you ain't going to make a move. Okay, that's, that's come on, man, wake up. If you were to take that same attitude and just say, look, every four to three months, I'm going after one niche, not 50 of them. I'm doing after one. I'm doing these master domain insights. We're going to do two case studies today on these. So if this doesn't drill home after today, nothing will. Um, of how incredibly profitable these things are. Um, and if you, just, if you just focus in on this and, and get this going, you're going to have these assets, not in one city, but in hundreds of cities, okay? And then how is that going to change your life? Like you can't believe, but, but if you can't get past all the fruit toasts and the wheat products and the distractions everywhere on this end of it and counting how many basketballs are passed from, back and forth between the white basketball players, you, you ain't never going to get there. Okay? So let me move on. It's enough of the rant there. So direct to sites. This is what we're looking at here. Uh, we're going to look at two case studies. We're going to look at the rehab niche and the emergency dental niche. These are not my sites, by the way, but this is what myself and my staff, we do a lot. We go out there and we study hundreds of other successful sites. And we reverse engineer how they're doing it okay so this is how they do it and this is another option you can do this option with our calls you theme it's perfect for this option by the way or there's plenty on theme forest of directory type options but it would work perfect with ours there's no reason to overcomplicate it so let's dive in and take a look at another business opportunity it's this the only reason I'm sharing this, I'm not sharing this to confuse anybody, it's, a, it, it's in totally congruent with everything I've ever spoke about. It's the exact same process. It's just only on the homepage of each city. It's just a little bit different. And that's it. That's it. Okay. So it's something that you can add to the mix on the center of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. All righty. So let me just expand this out a little bit. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Uh, these are master domain sites, okay? Again, anytime I've ever referenced master domain sites, I, I, the first one to say I'm not the one who invented them. It's people like these sites, and there's hundreds and hundreds of them out there, and they're all doing the exact same pattern, and they're all raking in a tremendous amount of money. 
Again, what's the advantage of a master domain site? The advantage is, is there's that tipping point. You got one domain, and then it's going to, once you get past about four or five cities, and you're going to get some quality backlinks to those four or five cities. After that, it's just downhill from there, baby. And I, I'm going to, I've, I've showed that before with the Mr. Handyman site. I'm going to show it again with another site here. Okay, so it's just like this is so much proof, but this is a directory on here. So let's take a look at this first one. This is um, this is the rehab niche. So this is rehab Phoenix. It's probably the number one term for rehab. Um, the unfortunate thing with rehab is that um, <laughs> it's fortunate for you if you're in this niche because it's a growing niche. It's unfortunate and sad because drugs, alcohol, uh, porno, all this stuff. It's just on the rise and there is no end in sight. So anyways, it's a good niche in that sense. It's not going anywhere. It's a growing niche. Um, so let's take a look at this site. This site consistently in cities, um, it's not ranking number one and there's a good lesson, good lesson to that. Okay. Um, it's not all about like we're trying to rank number one in every city. It's not about that. It's about spreading your net out to like a hundred cities and you're just on page one anywhere. When you start doing the math for that kind of stuff and you're selling these leads at five or 10 bucks a piece, and that's a low, that's so low, it's unbelievable, especially for this niche. Um, and you know, you're bringing in on average out of these 100 cities on that end of it, you know, an average of 20 to 30 per month and, and this is so unrealistically low, it's unbelievable, but you're retired at that point. Not only that, your site's worth two to three million dollars, okay? So this is the longer term version on here. This is not the, how quickly can I, I've just ranked a site in two to three months, or you know, three to four months, and now I'm bringing $2,000 a month, but that's too much work, I wanna do it faster. Are you freaking kidding me? Come on, wake up, Jesus. You know, you know how long we, we live in this era where it's like, I got to get it's like instant gratification. And it's like all these other stories like you hear about Google, PayPal, you know, you hear about these younger kids making these apps and Uber and Airbnb. And you all think it's like instant. It didn't happen instant. If you go that you just hear the you just hear the happy part. You didn't hear all the trials and errors before. If you go back and read biographies and look at this kind of stuff, these people are suffering on here and for years before they got here. And we're just asking you to take a few months to rank a few sites. What? That's not suffering. <laughs> Wake up. Jeez. Okay, so look, right here, rehab, right here, local Phoenix, Arizona. Um, how many backlinks they got on this end of it? Okay, so I already did this. Okay, so they got one. One freaking backlink ranking here. So this is totally congruent with everything I've just shared. By the end of today, you'll see a total of three of these, two now, and then I've done the Mr. Handyman on here. So this ranking of getting those four, five to seven cities ranking well, after that, you just gotta send a few crummy links and you're like ranking everywhere, okay? But can you wait that long? Can you take your time and patience? Or are you gonna get distracted while you're sucking down a Coke and a bag of French fries? And then you get another email from someone else that says, hey, you know, zero to two, I just got one in a minute ago. They're ridiculous. Zero to two million in 10 months or something. Okay, oh, please. Okay, here's another one on here. This is rehab at Mesa, Arizona. Now. Why I'm showing this one is because this is strategic. You want to reverse engineer what these guys are doing. Look, Phoenix and then Mesa, they're kind of, it's all the general Phoenix area, okay? It's Phoenix, Mesa is like part of Phoenix on that, but it's a very large suburb on that. So they got a separate page for it. Rehab, and this is important, important to note. So they got right there and they're just like ranking right away, okay? Um, let's take a look at some others and then we'll actually look into the site and stuff. I just want to look at how they're structuring them out. So it, it, same in Phoenix, Arizona, Scottsdale is like right there. It's just kind of all part of the community. It's all part of the valley. That's what they call that, right? It's, it, it's right here. So they got a separate page for it. All right. They got a separate page for me. So they got a separate page for Phoenix. Okay. You should take note of this kind of stuff. All right. This is important. Um, and, and here's another, this is a city is about two hours away from Phoenix, Tucson on that. And here they are, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're very consistent what they do. They're usually always ranking around number three, four, five or something. And here they are, Tucson, Arizona. 
Um, we'll take a look at some of the backlinks here in a second. Here's kind of a nice one. They got Rehab San Diego. They're right, right here, right up at number one. I think they I tossed this one out because they threw a few more backlinks at this one. Now I want to point something out. They didn't have to throw 31 backlinks at this. First of all, okay, um, on the end of it, these backlinks that they threw on here, their anchor text is totally screwed up on this end of it. Every one of their anchor texts on here, except for just a couple, these like, what is it? These little green ones, 1.5%. And this look, 1% says read more. Everything else is keywords on here, seek help, Look at this rehab alcoholic, rehab alcoholic and drug addiction. Uh, there's they, they use a naked link, okay? And this is not the linking structure I recommend at all. My linking structure is the complete antithesis of this. And then 75% is their main um, um, anchor text on here. And so they gotta toss all these backlinks at it in order to rank that high. They could literally just have ranked uh, just a couple of sites on here had they not gone all spammy with the, and I'll show you examples of others that aren't. Okay, so let's move on here. So San Jose, California, you know, they're about number three or so. So they're really consistent with what they're doing because they just have the same kind of crappy backlink structure. Uh, let's take a look at another one. I just want to get you an idea of how vast this is. Okay, there's a lot, like I got, there was another person who came in and and I was like, you know what, um, this seems to really only be geared in and work in the U.S. And I'm from the U.K., so I want to cancel. I'm like, seriously. I mean, go ahead and cancel. It's no no sweat off of me, but, you know, really. I mean, need I remind you that, you know, I'm sitting right now in Barcelona, Spain. The next time I have a conference call on this end of it, I'll be in Canada. Next time after that, on another conference call, I'll be in Korea. Another conference call after that, I'll be in the Philippines, okay? My staff is not in the U.S. We dominate in the U.S. in our niches, okay? So there's proof right there, without a doubt, that you can be outside of your country. I mean, come on, the world is so small now. Welcome to WWW, World Wide Web, remember? Okay, um, it doesn't matter where you are, you should be getting in front of the most traffic that you possibly can and really wrapping your mind around this whole uh, domain, this master domain concept on this end of it and understanding that if you do this in the US, after you rank four, five, seven cities, you got about a hundred more laps where you just got to toss little dinky crappy links to them and you're going to be ranking on page one. Okay. And just think about the freedom that's going to give you, or you can, you know, you can look at, you know, you can, you can look at that, which, which what I'm explaining to is the moonwalking bear, or you can continue to count how many times the white basketball team is passing the ball back and forth and say, well, if this doesn't work in the UK, I'm not going to do it. It will work in the UK, but you're not going to be enormously successful at it like you can be here. So yeah, you could probably in a niche in the UK, maybe you open up 15 sites realistically, maybe 18 on that end of it, but you're doing the same exact work, man. Do it in the US. And now you cannot not just stop at 18, you're gonna get a to go to page one card from Google for up to 100 cities or more, 150, 200. I'll invite a guest one day, she's very successful and she's on our group. She actually uh, was, uh, she, we had her over by, uh, we had her join the Vegas Mastermind Group, um, the uh, uh, live event, but she didn't join physically in person. She was too busy, but she joined via Skype and we put it on the television and she got on and her whole deal is this. And I was completely unaware of this is that she just goes after cities that are like 100,000 and less. <laughs> and she's able to rank and she totally cleans it up. Okay, so the 100, 150 cities I'm talking about in the US are all 100,000, 150,000 and above. If you start counting the cities that she's in, you were talking 300 plus cities. I mean, come on, please. You know, let's just, let's just wake up here to reality on this end of it. So this is Orlando, Florida. All right, how would you like to rank, you know, number one Orlando, Florida, right? That's pretty good. 
Let's take a look at these. Okay, it's defense on the attorney. And this is, okay, so let's take a look. Let's like dive in and like take a look at this site here. And then I want to take a look at some others on this end of it and just look how it's structured up. Probably some of you have already done it. Um, and uh, my internet's a little bit slow. There we go. So um, this site purely is just, they're in the lead gen business, totally. Now, they're doing it a little bit different. Let's go over how they're doing it because it's really interesting. So this is you know, Top Orlando Addiction Recovery Centers, right? So this is pretty cool, right? People these days, you could argue, are, you know, like if you ever shopped on Amazon and you're looking for whatever kind of generic product, you're probably going to select the one that has the highest reviews, even if it's a buck or two more. That's me anyways. Um, and I think other people are probably pretty similar. So this is kind of a very similar type of thing. It's like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't need to continue to search anymore, right? I don't got to keep searching. This is the top Orlando Florida Addiction Recovery Centers. Okay, cool. Reviews and ratings. So this is what they do. They, they just come down here and look at it. Look what they got. They got six on here. Do you think it's free to be there? No, it's not free to be there at all. On that end. But I don't know what the price is. I you could You could easily get a hold of them and say, hey, I've got a... Uh, recovery center I'd be interested in listening you know listing on your site and I'm XYZ can you have somebody contact me and you get the price right away uh, on that end. but you know you just you know you start doing the math on these things on here and uh, we're just my little ah my phone is charging so uh, but let me see if I got I'm, I'm not gonna do mega math on here but you take something like this and you know you're looking at it. You know they're, we're going to look at they're, they're, we'll look at the whole structure of their site on here. But they've got you know they've got six of these on here, right? And let's just say you can just go. They they you can do the uh, uh, site colon and then their root domain. You can see how many cities they're in on here. Usually on and on 150 cities, okay. And if they're just charging on here. Let's just say something ridiculously low, which I know it's way more than this on that, but $200 per month to list these. Now, you got to understand that recovery sites on here, when they bring a patient in, it's not cheap stuff, okay? They're banking in easily five to $15,000 a month. This is not a cheap sale. So when I say $200 a month just to list, list here, that's ridiculously low. So there are 900 cities, uh, 200, I'm not done yet, right? I still have, oops, times uh, 150 cities, right? Times six, I hope I did that right. It's $180,000 per month, okay, per month. That's insane. I know it's more than that. So anyways, just think about what that, what, what's going on there and... Um, how, how I would suggest you do these is that to provide value on the back end with these is that these numbers that are on here, okay, is that I would have them call Zoom numbers and then I would have clients be able to log in from the back end of Call Zoo and log in. And so they could see every month. It's like, hey, just a reminder, you know, you're paying $300 a month for this and check out how many phone calls you got on here and then do a little math for them. Let them know they can listen to the recordings, all that kind of stuff. Oh, and by the way, we noticed that you missed 35% of your calls were not answered. What's going on with that? Did you know we offer an extra service? And that extra service cost X amount up front and X amount per month and we'll monitor your calls and tell you which agents and what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. This is a whole other part of calls that you didn't even know about, right? Because you're not ready for it. But it's there when you are. It's enormous uh, revenue generators. So that's it. You always got to have upsells because people are going to want upsells. So let's just continue down here. So they got a nationwide sponsor which is smart in their niche, right? Because if someone's like, 
heavily into drugs that's kind of like, you know, you got to get them fixed. Otherwise, they're just basically going to die in the next couple of years where they make everyone's lives min- miserable. And maybe they're covered by insurance. It's like, OK, we're going to take them to Ocean Breeze on here. And this is going to be another premium listing on here. Check it out. Um, this is some nice, good uh, stuff on here. I'm sure that they charge a lower price for this, but something like these local meetings on here, like a local AA meetings. Maybe they're just free. I'm not quite sure um, on that. Either, but ready for support on here. Um, some other recovery. I'm sure these are sponsored as well. People are also paying for these. I mean, this is a good quality site. So when Google goes over this, Google's like, I don't, you know, you got a couple backlinks here. I don't care. This is some really good stuff. And you guys have already proven yourself in other cities. This is some good, valuable information for anyone out there looking for rehab, right? You would, I mean, if you're Google, you would want this to be at least in the top five. This is a good choice, right? Now they've added one other layer on here. This is something that you could add in the future to your sites. And that is, they've got a 188 number, which you can call, and uh, you can you can hire this, you can uh, source these out. They have 24 hour call centers and they just charge you by the call. So it's usually something like, you know, 10 or $15 per person that calls in and then you, you know, they're fully trained and they know when the number calls in that they got to use this particular script and, you know, that's what they do. Um, and then you can, you know, that's, I'm sure that's what these people are doing. And um, I used to have call centers in the Philippines. So uh, we used to, there's call centers on other floors and they used to do this kind of stuff. So um, it's very popular to do. You don't have to own the employees. So if you get one call a day, it doesn't cost you. You don't have to train or hire an employee for full time. It's just that 15 bucks. And, uh, and then they'll answer the call and they'll say, oh yeah, we're looking for a drug drug, blah, 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 and, you know, Orlando near blah, blah, blah. And then you have to make sure that they have all the information because that's going to be the most common questions. And they say, oh, yes, Mr. Jones, no problem here. We highly recommend this one. This one's quite close to you and like a little CRM notes below it. And this one is ranked blah, blah, blah. Did you know that so-and-so went here and have a this kind of recovery rate? And it's, they specialize in, you know, cocaine addiction, which is exactly what your son has. And, you know, you, you have all that stuff written down for them so they know. Um, and then obviously when they call to the other number that, that you give that's going to be a trackable number and that they're going to get that's probably a higher fee you know like 150 bucks or something for something like that but you could add that later on that end of it okay so some pretty cool stuff on that end of it what's nice about this is because there's so much information on here if we look at the different cities they're not changing a whole lot of the content on these pages okay it's the same old information on here. It's basically like a directory site. Okay, so let's take a look at another city and see what their homepage is different about. So where are we here? This is San Jose on here. San Jose with all the little programmers and stuff in there getting all drugged up. Um, let's check this out. Sorry, internet's a little bit slow, so we're just waiting for this. I got like a big guy windows open, so it's taking even longer. Here we go. Chose the wrong one on here. Sorry, there's a couple of these here. Rehabs, not that one. It's this one. Okay, so let's take a look at this one on here. I'm sure there was like 20 people in the chat box that already saw that. I just didn't look at it. So here we are. So this is Top San Diego Recovery Center reviews and ratings. Exactly the same as the other one, right? And I'm not, um, I'm not pushing for exact content, but this is one of the advantages of having like this. You can have the same thing here, right in verbatim, the same heading, but look, you've got different listings here. Um, this one's got a different sponsored one, right? On here, the Discovery House, where you can discover what it's like to be sober on here. They got the same listings here. Even if they couldn't find people, they, end up, you know, they probably just put the listing in there anyways because it's good content. I mean, this is a helpful site, right? Come on, let's be real about it on here. And then we, we come down here. It's, it's the same old, just following the same old pattern on here. You know, that's it, man. So you just go back and study that site. That's what it's going to be like. So 
that's one example. Let me fast forward to another one on here. Okay, so emergency dentist. So this emergency dentist example is going to look very amateurish compared to what we just looked at here. But regardless, they're still ranking in over 100 plus cities, and I guarantee you they're ranking in the bucks every goddamn month, okay? So let's take a look at this one. This is uh, Emergency Dentist Phoenix, Arizona. Hopefully I get the site right this time. This is this one right here. What a great name too, right? EmergencyDentistUSA.com. How easy would it be able to get like a domain, something like that? How about EmergencyDentistNow.com, right? <laughs> that would be even almost, you know, that'd be equally as good. So anyways, let's take a look at, you know, this one. What's, you know, ranking Phoenix, you know, and I'm, from my IP address, it's number two. Who knows what it is from yours? Uh, check it out. How many links do they have? Two crummy links on that right here. Two crummy links, a directory and some other piece of junk backlink. Okay. You're going to see this time and time again. So here's another one. So this is what they did again, just like the other site did too. They did uh, Mesa, Arizona, which is right next to Phoenix. It's part of the whole valley, as they call it. And they had a separate page for it, of course. And here they are. Uh, you know, ranking you know, above the fold. How many backlinks do they got? Oh my goodness, two, they don't have, they have no trust flow, no citation flow. They got two crummy links going to the back of this. And of it, who even knows what it is? Something about what food and medical answers. You know, I mean, come on. And here we got here, Scottsdale. See the pattern they're following? They're following the same city pattern that the other site was. So much you can learn for these. Let's look at the backlink structure. One crummy backlink. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> There's some kind of form or something on here. I mean, please. How easy, how easy is this? Emergency Dentist Tucson. Emergency, you see, they're number one. They're number one. Vegas, they're number three. How many backlinks to, to, to get to Vegas? One, one crummy backlink. Okay. Please, come on. This is this is Easy stuff, folks. Here it is right here. Okay, so let's take a look at this one on here on, on Vegas. This is why in the course, you don't have to do this, but this is why I recommend you go with trust flow or 15 or lower. You don't have to do it. If you're committed, you got a good niche on this, and a rehab's going to be a little bit harder, but you're going to get, you know, it's still going to work. It's just a matter of time. It's like, you know, if, you, if your average trust flow for the top three is 20 and above, it's not like it's impossible or it's done with or, oh, it's a, you can't do that. It's impossible. No, it's just going to take you a little longer. We got all the tools for you to do it. You want to get there a little faster? You know, then, then you're going to go after a little bit more easy hanging fruit. But it's not going to be as much. You're not going to get as much profit, right? Because, because you know, let's be honest here. We got to rehab that's going to be charged a minimum of five to 15 grand, some of them 25, 30 grand per month. Okay. Uh, versus an emergency dental care thing that might be like four or 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. It's easier to rank for either way. You're going to make buku bucks. So it doesn't matter. But the, the thing is, is that what I'm trying to get through to your, to your minds on here is that you need to stop counting. You need to start looking for what I'm showing you right here is the moonwalking bears. That's what we're talking about right now, moonwalking bears. And you got to constantly be thinking moonwalk bears because you're going to get off this call and you're going to be back to, hey, how many times did that white team pass the ball? And you're going to be totally distracted again. Okay, don't do that. So let's just take a look at this. So it said Vegas on here. What's, what's, the, what's the trust flow of this first site and the second site? Well, I pulled it out for you. So it's right here. 15. See, what did I tell you? The next one, number two, 13. Okay. All right, so look, what I'm teaching, what I'm showing you, it freaking works, ladies and gentlemen. Please listen to it. Pay attention to this kind of stuff. Let's take a look at their site, like I promised you. These sites will look like total amateur hour. I mean, look at this. <laughs> oh, she has, we, we're going to have a red background, so we have to find somebody with flaming red hair on here. I don't know. I got nothing against redheads. I'm just, you know, they're supposedly genetically superior according to scientists and uh, all this kind of other stuff, which they probably are. But anyways, um, so it's just, it's a really ugly site. 
but I can guarantee you it's raking in probably a minimum of $80,000 a month. So who cares how ugly it is? And there are, this is a directory site, okay? So they do the little, the little toll-free thing like the other one does. This is not something you have to do immediately. This is something you could do at a later date or just not do at all. Uh, but it's, it's kind of like, okay, I'm looking for an emergency dentist. They're really pushing for the call to the call center is what they're pushing for here. Because I got to scroll all the way down here. I got to keep scrolling the same call this number again. Okay, maybe I should just call it. And it's going to go to call center and then and, and they're going to direct them over. And their, their business model, you'd have to call them and find out. Um, from both ends as a customer and pretending that you're an emergency dentist and find out what the heck's going on. Uh, but if you scroll down here, right, then it's like, okay, here's another, here's one. Oh, here's another one on here. And then, oh, here's another one. And they list the picture on here. Oh, here's another one. It's not free to list these on here. Oh, here, here's another one. Uh, here's another one kind of an ugly way to set it up right the other way to build the site was much much better on that as far as how clearly it just kind of boxed it out and you can clearly look and say oh that one I know my area that one's closest to me right and stuff so it's just kind of ugly the way they did it but you know what might be ugly but I bet they're making more muco buckle than you so don't get caught in analysis process. Just go out and freaking do it, period. That's what these people did. They just went out and did it. They didn't give a, a rat's butt about whether it was going to be perfect or whatever. And they're just ranking it over and over again. And, you know, it just, it's just, it just lights out on here. They just stayed focused on that. So let's go ahead and move on here. So, no matter what you decide to do, whether you're going to do a directory site, like these kind of models are listed out, or just, you know, one page sites where you're going to be delivering all the phone calls to one, or you can maybe do a round robins because you get so many leads after a while that you'll have to, you know, round robin it out to two or three different clients. That's fine. Either way is going to work fine. All right. At the end of the day, the core is exactly the same. What's the core? Master domain. <laughs> Focus on the moonwalking bear. Don't get distracted, okay? These things take some time to work, but it's so worth it. And guess what? You'll be one of the 1% on here that will actually do it. Now, what does it take to be the 1%? Because Oh, because the 1% makes all the money and the 1% lives a good luxurious life, you know? Yeah, I'm part of the 1%. There's no freaking doubt about it uh, on here. But there's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about any other 1%. The one percenters do what? They just do a measly 10% more than everyone else. And they're consistent about it. 10% more. So if everyone else is working 40 hours a week, you're just working an extra four or five hours, but you're consistent at it, okay? That, that's it, okay? You, you, but, but you don't give up. You don't go, oh, I'm all distracted on my fructose and wheat and my insulin levels popping up and down and all this kind of crazy stuff. And, and what's feeding into that is all the Twitters and the distractions. And, you know, even I, I haven't watched television in like 10 years. But I was reading an article the other day that even on, I, I can't even watch. I was on the plane and I was like, going over the movies and then I accidentally pressed TV shows and then one started playing and it just like, I couldn't watch it on that. But one of the reasons is, is that they purposely speed up the, the, the speed at which the actors have to talk. I don't know if you've noticed that or not. Maybe you haven't, you know, like, like friends or whatever is out there. They all speak faster than normal people speak. Okay. Because otherwise they'll lose the attention span of everybody. Okay, it's just, it's crazy. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I mean, get started. Let's get started on the next section. So on here. So now I want to talk about something that's really important. Um, and that is, it falls perfectly in alignment with what we just talked about. And that is that when you're looking at your particular niche, my phone is ringing 
and it's charging on the other side of the room. So that buzzing noise, it will turn off in just a minute. Um, these niche specific sites on here, you know, you may have like 10, 15 private blog networks. And remember, we have a link exchange within the group. So each one of those private blog networks, you know, you can 5X the amount of leverage that you get out of those. So and without making everything look spammy or any of that kind of stuff, and there'll be good quality backlinks. But you want to dedicate one as a minimum, three maximum. You want to take one to three, and don't just automatically do three, okay? Just, I mean, if you just, if it's just do what you, do what you can do, do what's sustainable for you. You know, when I won the 2009 Bill Phillips uh, transformation contest, it really changed my life. The one thing that I was brave enough to ask in the beginning was, is this sustainable? Because I knew I could, if I really applied myself, I knew I could win the contest. Um, but I want, I didn't want to like lose it like everyone else does. Let's be honest. All this is the thing. Like it's like you know the what is it called the big fat loser, whatever that. I don't again. I don't watch TV, but I was reading this article. Um, the the big fat loser. I think it was, it was called or the whatever it's called. I don't think it's called the big fat loser, but it's it's where they get these people that are like really like like bovine obese. By the way, they don't have these types of fatness in Europe or Asia, so it's very strange when you see them in the US. It's like, what the fuck is going on? How did this human being get up to 285 fucking pounds? You just don't, it doesn't happen anywhere else. Okay, except for like the UK, uh, I don't know about Australia, I've been down there, but like in, in Europe and Asia, it, 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 it ain't happening. If it's not, it's like, you just, you never see it, period. If you do, it's a, it's a goddamn tourist. Um, but so, that, so, so, you know, the show I'm talking about, right? They get these people that are like 285 pounds, 300 pounds. They're just, they're, they're, they're fucking addicted to food is, is a deal because food is a drug. Um, and, and they put them through all these extremes and extreme low calories and, working out, you know, they, they, you know, they all up losing the weight, right? They got to get up every week and like, you know, how much did you lose this week? The big suspension and they step on the scale and boop, 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 boop. You know, it's like, you know, it's, it's all for production. They don't give a crap about those people or the sustainability. 100% of those people gain all the weight back and more. And they have to sign a contract that they can't come back publicly and say anything about it. Okay. So sustainability is really important, not only in weight loss, okay? So I went at my store here that I'm getting back. And I'm sorry on these coaching calls that go off on tangents, but I think they're of value. Um, so sustainability. So I said to myself, you know, part of the program was, and I, I, I total respect to Bill Phillips and his family. They absolutely changed our lives, everything about it. I have no disrespect whatsoever for it. So just let me add that caveat to here. Um, he's a, just an absolute wonderful person. But... Um, I just looked at it and said, you know, he was part of his program was doing, I think it was like around five meals a day or something, um, five smaller meals a day, which is kind of the protocol. And I just was honest with myself and I said, you know, I can't eat five meals a day. I mean, I could for like 18 weeks for the contest, but what about afterwards? That's too much. And uh, so I said, what can I do that's sustainable? I said, I can do two to three meals a day. So I want you to look at this authority blog private blog network on here that I'm talking about and you be honest with yourself what's sustainable. Is it three? Is it two? Is it one? I mean, be honest with yourself. Um, and then the other protocol was something like working out four days a week and then doing some aerobics on top of that. And the time frame for that per week was like five or six, seven hours total, something like that. And I was like, you know what? I could do that for 18 weeks, but not the rest of my life. And so I said, what can I do for the rest of my life? Which is, you know, it's 2017 now. I'm in better shape than I was then. Um, and I'm 50 years old. Uh, and this is the power of sustainability, both in your physical life and your business life. Um, because if you can do something smaller increments consistently for five or six years versus I'm going to try to blow it out of the water and then blow up and burn out 12 weeks later and then go, oh, shit, I screwed up again. <sighs> and then you feel guilty and you why me and blah, all that kind of, you know, you know, self-defeating feelings that come in. And then, 
and then you get pumped up again and then you try it again three or four months later and you get on this yo-yo diet plan for life and business and everything that you do. I'm telling you, filter this through as it's sustainable. Find something that's sustainable that you'll continuously do every single day. It will add up and gain momentum and blow you away. And then everyone else will look at you like, oh, you're an overnight success. And you'll be like, fuck you. <laughs> you know, I'm not. Um, so ask yourself on here, you know, and then and then with the, with the workout program, I said, you know what? Realistically, I can do 30 minutes three days a week. And I know I can always do that no matter what. Guess what? That's exactly what I do today. Okay, this is like, what, seven years later? And I'm in the best shape of my life. It doesn't matter where I travel or what I do, do. Three days a week for 30 minutes, I can find the time to do that. Right? All I got to really do is just sit down, just put my phone in my bag, and all of a sudden I've created 30 minutes. I can do that. So you got to ask yourself here, when you're doing this stuff in this business, what kind of pace is sustainable to you? for the long term don't like, rush into all this and like burn out it's like it's consistently man okay so anyways went off on a tangent there so one to three authority private blog networks on here so you know you you got the whole rant right so be honest with yourself because this is what you got to do for them this is going to be the most important uh backlink for your whole site it's not the it's just one of the most important on here, and you, and, and you need to have it. And this is long-term business, okay? All right? So you're going to add content two times per month around a niche. It's going to be niche-specific. It doesn't matter where the private blog network, what niche it was before, okay? That doesn't matter on here because you'll see why in a minute. It doesn't matter, Jack Dilly Squat. Just, just get one from us and just go for it. Um, backlinks are going to come from relevant sites, forums, blogs, and then remember you can order the majestic backlink reports on your competition and then you want to use those and go through every one of the backlinks meticulously, click on them and then go to them, find out where the backlink is and ask yourself, can I get a backlink from the same source? Okay, this is invaluable information, by the way, because you want to build these little tiny authority sites in the same niche as yours by, by bringing a ton of backlinks that are niche specific. And I show you in the course how to do it with forums. I show you in the course on how to do it from blogs, comments. Okay, I show you step by step on how to do that from like news papers and stuff like this that have relevant content. And then, in, and then in Majestica, when you get your backlink reports for your competition, you can weed through those and you can find it because there's always going to be some backlinks in there that, that, that you can get as well and it's relevant content on that. Event. And then this is the next one. This one's a little bit of work, but I'm telling you, this one or two or three little authority private blog networks, they're going to be powerhouses that are going to give that, like that supercharge Okay, it's going to be like that. It's going to, it's going to supersize. <laughs> it's going to supersize you, okay? Um, and, uh, and that is going to take a little more work, but every single one of these backlinks, you don't need a whole bunch of them. You just need a few are just going to take your, your private blog network, this one special one that's like, like powerhousing everything. It's that, that extra little jolt you need um, is doing guest blogging. It's absolutely the most powerful thing out there. Uh, guest blogging on authority sites in your niche. Okay, It's going to take a little work to do that, but uh, we're not asking you to do that for every single site. It's just this, and your whole like arsenal of 20 or 30 private blog networks. This is over a time, right? One or two of those is what I'm describing right here. And you can link these to every single city. Okay, you can link, and, and, and this is what we did um, when I partnered up with the uh, handyman site, okay, uh, we if you notice in the backlink structure there, every single city, we've got almost the exact same backlink structure going to every single city, and it works, I'm telling you. Um, and that's it, man. And you got to work at it. It's like it, it's like this investment that you put into it, but it's this one little killer site that you are linking somewhere internally or some from anywhere within the site 
back to one of your city pages, any of those. And I'm telling you, you can even have a, you can have a, even have a director listening stuff. It's, it's the one little thing that you need to do. It's that other little project that you work at, you massage at it. And um, it's going to, you know, other people won't do this kind of work. They just won't do it because they don't have the vision. They can't, they can't, they can't think farther than the next tweet. Okay, they think they can't think farther than scrolling down two or three more scrolls on their freaking Facebook account. Okay, they can't think any further than that. Have a little more foresight on here. On these sites, at least have one of these a YouTube channel, a Flickr, a Twitter, a Facebook. And in module seven, I go over how you can get all the relevant free content for this stuff. So that's the easy part. So I'm just going to leave that at that. Um, I'm going to share with you this. We're, we're in part three right now of this and I said and this is long term vision. This is really what I've been leading up to this entire coaching call. And that's long term vision. Okay. Look, short term vision is pure poison to you. Okay. It's absolute pure poison. You're going to have ups and downs no matter what you do in life. No matter what you do, there's going to be conflicts. There's going to be trials and tribulations. This is normal stuff right now, okay? Um, and you need that. The, the long-term vision is going to get you past all of that stuff. It's going to get you past all the storms, okay? It's going to get you past all of the snowstorms, all of the rainstorms. It's going to easily get you past the good weather and stuff like this. And it's going to keep you on the road, the narrow road of success. I want to repeat that. The narrow road of success. Okay. It is a narrow road. All right. Um, Long-term vision on here is in, in this business model is really narrow and super simple. It is just a do a little bit every day kind of patience game. That's all that it is, man. It's all that it is. Look, narrow. Whatever niche you're in, you got to become an expert at it. Look, ain't nobody going to pay you jack crap unless you're good at what you do. So whatever niche you're in, you got to become an expert at it. You got to, if, if, if you can, you want to go out to trade shows just to be around these people, whatever they are. If it's a rehab, you just want to be around uh, 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 some kind of trade show where there's other rehab. You want to understand the niches. You want to take those exercises in video zero and study another 200 of those cities, another 200 of those sites. You want to call these, the, these niches. Okay. You want to call them up and act as a customer. Just pretend, just see how they interact with you. See where they're trying to direct you. How is the, how is the phone conversation going? What are they trying to do here to close this sale? You want to understand this, okay? You want to understand their site structure. These people have already figured it out. You want to reverse engineer it, okay? Um, you need to become an expert in this arena from a, you got to understand enough to know about the business in order to be able to market it and make your pages and stuff convert it. Now, don't get this caught up for, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. Um, analysis paralysis. Think back at the emergency dentist site. Okay, they had the freaking ugly site that's been designed as poor as crap. Uh, crap. <laughs> but they're banking, okay? So if you have a choice between perfect and moving forward, move, move forward with imperfection. Let me repeat that again. Move forward with imperfection. And the problem is, is that a lot of this base is off of SEO. Once you, we're going to talk about later on other calls about the SEO and then we'll layer the page on top of that and you're going to more than double your business doing that. But right now, you got to get the SEO part out of the way. But there's something about SEO, about the kind of people that it attracts and just the method of it, that it, that it just kind of draws people into this analysis fucking paralysis bullshit that slows everyone down. Look, man, you, look, m our sites are simple. I know there's faster ways to do it out there, but I don't care. I'm, I'm, I've McDonaldized my business. It's simple and it's slow. We have vision and we're patient. We deliver two types of links. We're done. That's what we do. Okay. That's what we do, but we do it really well. And guess what? It's sustainable and we do it every single day. Okay. Long-term vision. It's narrow. 
It's sharp. Stay on the path. The path is easy. You're building a master domain site, folks, on here. All right? It takes time. It takes patience. But you got to do it. The rewards are huge on the end of it. I love this saying. Vision without execution is hallucination. <laughs> it's so funny. And it's so damn true. Okay. We'll move on to questions and answers on here. If some of you who are first on the call on here, you might be a little bit shocked by how these calls run, but this is what you bought into, so I hope you enjoy it. Questions and answers. I just signed up, and I'm trying to decide upon a niche. Oh, boy, this is going to go over. I'm going to give you some tough love here. I can already tell. I have several that, have, that, that will work. I almost said worked, past tense, that will work, but I have small sites built on them already. These sites were not built with all of your recommendations. Should I start the program with an undeveloped domain instead? Yes. <laughs> start the right way. Use those existing whatever sites you've got going on there and build them out however you want and use them and backlink to your master domain site. The key here, if I haven't drilled into you already, is the master domain site, master domain site, master domain site. It will take a while to get it up, but once it's up and running, you're gonna be, you're just gonna be shocked at how quickly you're just gonna start ranking in all these cities. Okay, give yourself the opportunity, give yourself permission, give yourself the pleasure of letting that happen, please. So take your existing sites that you've already got, and you're already paying hosting for, you've already built them up, they're already niche relevant, and somewhere on there, at the bottom or on the widget or something like that, say, hey, this is one of our sponsored sites, or this is one of our sponsored partners, or something like that, and just a direct link out to your new master domain site. That's how I would handle that. Okay, uh, next, these are all people who sent in their questions, so I answer these first, okay? Um, so if you want your questions to get answered first on here uh, and guaranteed, then you want to, you have, we have another coaching call. We have them every week. You can have another coaching call. Send your questions as early to support at callsy.com. So uh, Chris, I have heard you mention, okay, this, this is, looks pretty good here. Um, I haven't previewed these, by the way. This is the first time I'm seeing them as well. I've heard that you've mentioned time management a few times on past webinars. I would like to hear your thoughts and strategies on managing time better from your experience okay so let me let me pause and answer that question on the center of it there's all kinds of time management mumbo jumbo analysis paralysis total baloney crap out there none of them address the real freaking issue okay and this is the real issue on the end of it our brains and what we eat and what we do we can't even concentrate when's the last time you sat down and read for t for 10 minutes no forget that five minutes straight without your mind being distracted to something else and then you go back and go i don't even remember what i read this is how freaking this is this is the, this is the absurdity of it so this is what you do to if, if you want to kick ass and time management do this step one get up in the morning meditate for three goddamn minutes that's it and in fact, meditate with your eyes open. It's my, I'm not going to get into it right now, but my theory is that's better than closed because you're, you're trying to train your brain to be conscious and focus on that from distractions with your eyes open, not closed. So it's better adapted to your life anyways. And that goes against convention, by the way. But you know what? I just do what works. So do that. Three freaking minutes. Set your, set, set your alarm on your phone. Just three minutes, sit there, still, any way you want to comfortably, and stare out. Stare outside, stare at a blank wall, whatever you want to do, okay? Um, and just don't, you don't need to buy a book or none of that stuff. Just relax. A thought comes through your head, just try to slow it down. Just try to make it disperse, that's it. It ain't going to happen all the way. Just, just do that and just try to calm the brain. When you're done with that, you know, Kindle. Best invention in the world besides Audible. Kindle, get a book and read. Don't do Audible. I need you to concentrate. I need your brain to work. Spend 10 minutes. Okay, we're at what? 13 minutes of your day? Spend 10 minutes reading a book. Any book you want. Don't worry about what's popular out there, what, you know, what everyone's posting on Facebook. Just whatever you want. Just read. 
the idea is now we're going to now f retrain the brain to focus. Now, you want to add a third layer onto this? Then try intermittent fasting. Now, I've posted a lot of things on my Facebook page. It's just Facebook forward slash Winters Chris, not Chris Winters, Winters Chris. On that, I've, I've, I've lately, I always post stuff about intermittent fasting. And the main reason I started it was not to lose weight, none of that kind of baloney. It was to improve my mental performance because I consider myself an athlete in training when I'm working. And how can I improve my mental, mental focus? The fastest way you can do your mental, uh, increase your mental focus, plus all kinds of other insane health benefits, is to not freaking eat until around 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, I know that sounds insane to most people, but trust me. 100% of the people that have done this, and I don't have a course or nothing on it, have done it, have all emailed me back voluntarily. They've made videos, there's all kinds of stuff. I have like hundreds of success stories. They're like, I'm never going back. This is amazing. And guess what? After four or five o'clock in the afternoon, eat whatever the hell you want. Just cut out the breads, cut out the wheats, and just eat whatever you want. Go crazy. Drink. Whatever you want, it doesn't matter. But don't eat for 18 hours during the day. Your brain will become so freaking focused, it's unbelievable. And time management is like time now done. All right, so that's number one. Number two, um, a related question. I've heard you mention that you run three to four businesses. Yes, I do. We'll be opening up a fifth one um, in Korea pretty soon. I want to ask you how you manage your time in running all these businesses. No problem. If you go back two or three webinars, um, and I, it was a two-part series, don't think that these webinars are junk, man. The, the, go back and listen to the replays. There's some, there's some serious, valuable crap in there. And these two have probably got the best response yet. And that is, I talked about the difference between a, well, I talked about building your winning team. It's the most important thing you can do. Um, and your winning team is, is everything. Um, and it's hiring your first outsourcer like now <laughs> and hiring them now, even though, even if you think you don't have enough work for them, hire them. And then it immediately takes you out of the trenches and doing all that stupid shit. You know, the building the sites and the content and all that stuff. Bullshit. You and no one on this call should be doing that. What you should be doing is hiring somebody to put them in place there for three, four, five hundred dollars a month and then stress the shit out on how you're going to pay them. That's number one. And number two, you're going to be like, I got to find enough work for them. Think about that mind shift for a minute. I got to find enough work for them. Now, what are you focused on? Growing your goddamn business. OK, and that's what you all should be doing instead of focusing on the next goddamn shiny object out there and the new plug in that comes in. I mean, come on. Wake the freak up. Um, and, and I go on and on about it. I talk about how, you know, people who, you know, they just started their little offline business and they're making some income and they could consider themselves an entrepreneur. And I'm saying, hell no, you're not an entrepreneur, okay? You're a solopreneur. And what's a solopreneur? It's no different than an employee, okay? So the only difference is, is that you work from home and you work more than an employee and you get paid less. And that's all you are. You're not a real entrepreneur. A real entrepreneur does this. A real entrepreneur is focused on building teams. And these teams build the business. And that's what they focus on. They don't focus on any of the minutia crap. Okay? I go over that in two coaching calls. And I rant on for a couple hours on each. But there's good content in there. How to hire. All that kind of stuff. So that's what I would do. All righty. Um, questions on here in your notes preceding video zero I wrote in here I guess I tend to favor niches that go to customers um, is is this not uh, obligatory or just tend to favor them okay so look you can go for both niches it doesn't matter we just looked at two niches right now that I gave a case study which are which are which scenario yeah, the customer goes to the location of the business. All right. Um, so, yeah. So the other scenario, which is where the service goes out to the customer in some form or another, uh, that's another one. Um, the only difference there 
is is that uh, if you're dealing with addresses on your site now the directory takes care of it right away because it's already got the addresses there uh, but if you're doing the other model where it's just going to be one one of those directories or one of your um, customers on there you're going to have an original address that you got in there exactly how it's outlined in the course and then when you get a customer you have to take the font kind of lightly gray it out so it's almost indistinguishable by the, by the eye make the font super super small so like no one can see it except for google um, and then you'll just put a picture right on top of it an image of the address of your customer so what, what does that do the image the people can see but the font google can see which is your original address that you put in it to begin with and then it's a win-win situation so that, that that's just one of the various ways you can get around that but at the end of the day it it, it doesn't matter that's a minor minor detail right um and the other kind of advantage of having a niche where the niche goes out to the customer's home is that that niche will typically travel farther in a particular demographic area than a customer would travel to go to the, the niche's location. So let me give an example. So a mobile uh, dog groomer or pet groomer, right, mobile, they'll probably travel 15 to 20 miles to a customer's home. Flip that around and ask, will a customer, how far will a customer drive to get a little spot, a haircut, and a shampoo? Probably five to 10 miles, realistically, let's be honest, okay? So that's another advantage there too, okay? So anyways, that's that. All right, so we'll open up to questions and answers. I feel like I've been on for like forever. I don't even know what the time is, let me check. Yeah, I've been on for, yeah, I can tell. I was getting around an hour and a half on that so let me uh, we'll get into some questions and answers uh, I can tell you right now with the amount of people in the calls uh, we're probably not going to get to all of them if for some reason you, you have a pressing question I'm going to dive into it right now but if for some reason I do not get to your question that's what my support team is for okay it's just support at callsview.com email the you know send the questions in they, they will answer them okay and uh you know, these are the people that, you know, uh, you know, they actually know more about this business than I do. They actually run the whole operation on the back sign of it. So they're more than qualified to. So let me jump into it here right away. Let's see here. Uh, Daily Habits. Alrighty. So Lynn asks on here, when, when do we uh, learn how to get clients? I'll tell you what. You learn how to get clients when you build your master domain site, okay? And you've got leads coming in on that end of it. Then you're ready for it. Until then, you're not. And it's like everybody, it's like we get this question, like people are day two in the course. How do I get clients? What? You got? You, you haven't even picked out a niche. Uh, are, are you serious? No, got to know how to get clients or I'm canceling. Well, then go ahead and cancel because we're not the right program for you. Okay, all right, get some leads in, build these things out. There's a lot of work to do on here. Then when you're ready for it, then you'll get it, okay? I mean, that's, that's it's like, th this is what happens. I've seen this before. I saw this in 2013 when I first opened up the course, which we're closing this up course. This, this course is done. Um, so if you're in, you're in, fantastic, but... 2013 I saw the same thing it was like we we provided how to get clients in the end and it's, and it's like everybody went to that section like immediately before they had a site before they had an edge before they had anything they went did they just went right to it and then all the focus was around that and it was like but you don't even have client you don't even have a site or niche up what are you what are you doing what's going on and it's like everybody likes to go to the to the last chapter of the book and, and get the happy ending, but when they really don't have a happy ending. It's like, what the heck is going on here? I don't know what it is, but it has something to do. And I'm not saying, you know, the person who typed that question in is in this situation. You know, the person who typed this situ this, this in, if if I mean if you've got if you've already picked out a niche, we've approved the niche. 
You've got to sign up. You've got leads come in and you're missing customers because of us. For God's sakes, contact support at callzoo.com. Give us your URL and your main keywords. Let's verify that and we'll forward that information to you like in two minutes. Okay? But if you're not there, then order some private blog networks from us. Ask us some intelligent questions. Send us in your site and say, hey, can you just make sure that this is okay? All right? Does that make more sense? For the vast majority of you, it does. All righty. Um, sorry if I'm such a stickler. Actually, I'm not sorry. I'm a stickler on that because I freaking care, okay? And because I want to see you through this thing on this end of it, all right? It's really, really important. I don't know what it is. It's like... Um, it's like people want to feel like they're getting something done when they're really not. It's like they want to be able to put up that page with the videos and stuff on the, the clients could come look at, yet they don't have any leads coming in. Anyways, I'll stop right there. Again, this may not be it for you. Um, all right. Okay, so let me just, let me just, okay, so a lot of people on here love the honesty, good honesty, good, okay, good, so, all right, you're right on that. Okay, Majestica, all right, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Majestica, available in Chrome, says Jim. I'm not quite sure on that end of it, but um, you can always get the, for the terms within the, um, um, uh, membership on that end of it. You can always get the Majestica backlinks for your city that you're in and the, and the top three, you just send them in your top three for your city that you're in. And that's what you work on. And then when you move on to the next city, you do the same thing. Um, yeah, Biggest Loser, we got that. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, yeah, the males are now in the show are over 400 pounds, exactly. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy on that. Uh, love the candor, love the honesty. Okay, we're gonna hear, we're, I'm looking for, so you got some burning questions, just type them in the bottom on that end of it. Um, type them in the bottom right now on this end of it. Uh, uh, simple confirmation is 250 searches a month, the threshold for the number of searches for a niche to be viable. David, that's a good question. It depends, okay, it really depends. So I will have her on one of these calls uh, I can't guarantee it, but I'm like 95% sure. Uh, and, and I'll have one of our own calls and members talk about this. The, the, she's in niches that are like, you know, maybe 50 <laughs> per month uh, call volume. And she's not in a whole lot of them, by the way, and she's crushing it. Okay. Um, so I think 250 is a realistic, but... Um, and I think you can do that. And I think if you think more scale, it's like, okay, there's a minimum of 250. And if I can get this thing cranked out to 50 or hundred cities, that may be overwhelming right now. But if you just kind of think 15 or 20 in the beginning and know that once you get past that seven or eight point where you're ranking on page number one, it's pretty much going to be a, a cakewalk after that. Um, anything, anything scale and vision, you got to have the narrow road of vision long term. Um, it doesn't ma really matter that much at that point because the volume takes over, the sure volume takes over at that point is, and, and, and it's gonna take care of all your flaws. <laughs> that's, the, that's the cool thing about this. If you just do it and you're not even perfect about it and, and you just focus on the volume and scalability, the, the volume and scalability will just like give you so many handicaps for all your imperfections and you'll be a winner at the end. Seriously. I mean, just do the math. You're in 50 cities, right? And you're ranking on page one and each one's only giving you a measly, you know, 20 leads per week and you're, and you're way under charging up for like $7 a lead. Dude or gal, you're, you're like retired at that point, right? So just, you know, don't get too caught up in that exact 250 number on the end of it. Um, it's gonna, you're, you'll definitely be a, a, at a slight little advantage if the, um, if the cost per transaction is pretty high, right? Because of the cost per transaction, like a DOI attorney is gonna be at least 3,000 bucks minimum. And if it's your second offense, which the majority, unfortunately, I know some DOI attorneys, the majority of their work is second and third time offenses, which is between five and $10,000. But the first timers are usually around 3,000 bucks. That versus someone who cuts hair at 25 bucks a piece, 
you know what I'm saying? At 250 searches per month, it kind of depends on that a little bit uh, on that number. But scalability will trump all that stuff. So I hope I answered that. Cool. Can we get access to your expired domain tool? No, I don't. We don't. We're not in the business of that. We're, we're, we're on that narrow road of success. And we've got a lot of different tools we could go out and start selling. That's just not what we're doing. That's not in the business we're in. Okay. So, um, no. But if you're, um, you know, you your member and you go to module seven, you can just read through there and you just you can get as many as you want from us. You just gotta follow that direction on that end of it. So uh, good content. Yeah, it's recorded. They always record them. Um, okay, good. Oh, this was a good question. Let me go back. Um, assessing the viability of a direct to site. Is this the same as a niche in module one? Yeah, you could take any niche in module one that you find out that you determine is going to be viable and and you could apply the directory model on it. I just wanted to toss this out. I hope I didn't toss confusion out there. Um, it's it's just another way to do it. Everything else stays the same. Okay, everything else stays the same. Um, and these are just some different models that you can look at on here. Um, so either one's going to work. The idea is just commit and go deep. You know, you're going to drive every weekend from on Greyhound bus from Appleton down to Chicago for seven dollars and fifty cents, and you go to the library on the event. And by the time you get there, it's you know two thirty-five. So fast as you get there, and the because it's the weekend, the library's going to close at six o'clock. So you just got that short period of time, and you got to go back to the bus station. And the next bus that leaves at ten thirty, so you got to hang out at this crappy bus station. You know, this is this drill. Okay, so if you're committed and you do this over and over again. Um, and you just commit to it, it's going to happen. Um, how much do we need to consider competition when choosing a niche? Um, you, you're going to be able to compete no matter what. Okay, That's the bottom line. If you just follow those steps, you can compete no matter what. It just becomes a matter of how soon. But normally the more competitive niches are probably going to pay more at the end. But... Scale trumps all of that stuff. So what I recommend in the course in module one is a trust flow of 15 or lower and the um, emergency dentist niche was a perfect example of that. It, you can see once you get past those four to five, seven cities, you start getting these other cities. Sometimes, you know, you just get like one or two niche, one or two backlinks in your ranking above the fold. So it's pretty cool stuff. So you want to play that kind of a little bit more safer game than just go for a trust flow of 15 or below for the top three. Um, if you find a niche and you just think this is an amazing niche, everything else is coming in there, and apparently some other people probably thought so too, so it's a little more competitive, you know, you've got the ammunition here to compete. Just going to take you a little longer, that's all. All righty. Does it matter if we use the DMA region for the city instead of the individual locations on the Google Keyword Planner? That's a great question. Um, yeah, it's going to matter, matter hugely um, on that. Um, you could safely use a DMA on that. You'd be fine. It's enough. It's within reason. You could do that. Um, if you decide to use just the city location, I wouldn't use just the city, like, like Phoenix. Don't use like just Phoenix. Um, the other alternative is to use Phoenix plus no more than a total of 10, including Phoenix suburbs. So if you're in the Phoenix and you're doing that, then it's going to be Phoenix, Mesa, Scottsdale, Gilbert, uh, Peoria. I'm, I'm up to five right now. Right? Chandler, Tempe, uh, Glendale. So I'm up to seven at this point. Temp I mean, there's probably some others in there that I forgot about. Uh, surprise. <laughs> That's pretty much going to cover the DMA. The DMA is going to be really safe to use and accurate when you're when you've got a niche that will go to the customer's service area. Versus if you've got a niche where they're going to they they will travel to the service provider's location 
then you're probably going to want to use the second half there. But let's just default this back for a minute. When we're scaling this thing out to 50, 80, 100 cities, these kind of little stuff at that point, the scaling is going to make up for your human errors. Okay, so I hope I answered that. Cool. Uh, do you mean to add content two times per month to the PBNs or the actual master site? No, I'm only saying add content twice per month only to one, two, or three maximum PBMs that are going to be the PBMs that are going to be like these these incredible niche specific sites that you're going to add rich content to and images um, and you're going to go out and you're going to spend hours and hours investing in getting niche specific backlinks from forums and blogs and blog posting back to these one to two to three maximum private blog networks that are going to be niche niche specific so if you're in law, these three niches are going to be law niches, okay? And you're going to build the heck out of them forever. They're going to be your three golden ticket uh, backlinks, and you're going to backlink them to every city that you got. Aside the social programming you spoke about um, uh, is groupthink. In, it's indoctrination, definitely. Um Yes, agreed. Sorry for being off topic. That's okay. It's late enough now. We can be off topic for from officially from here on. After an hour and a half, we can be off topic. So no no worries about that. Um, will intermittent fasting help us in weight loss? Absolutely. Just check out my. I just post. This is kind of my passion. So I just post about it constantly on my just my private just on my Facebook page. So um, just just follow it. I've, I've already maxed out the friends. We just follow it and you'll get alerted to those if you're interested in that topic. Um, and it doesn't mess up your metabolism. I, I, I post videos of, you know, doctors and scientists and all this kind of stuff. And 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 you'll see all the comments down below because all the com you know, most of the comments below are are people that have already done this just without any specific directions. The only directions that they were given was don't eat for 18 hours and then for that six hour window, just eat. And, you know, you can just, everyone's like, oh man, I, I mean, I just got these back. It was like, uh, I was just in China like uh, three weeks ago and I met some people there and I, I spoke at an event there about zero taxes uh, for some Amazon retailers and, uh, and then as a side note, afterwards we're talking around and it's like, you know, it's like we're breaking for lunch and I'm not eating. You know, why aren't you eating? Well, I'm just going to have a cup of coffee and some of my coconut uh, oil in it. Well, why is that? Because <laughs> I intermit fast. That's why. And uh, so on. And, and there was a, somebody just randomly uh, private messaged me and said, hey, since China, I did this intermittent fasting. I'm I'm working harder. I'm focusing more, and I lost ten pounds. And I'm never hungry. It just goes on and on and on by this. So don't just take my word for it. I got nothing to sell you on this kind of stuff. Just try it. Just try it. You'd be surprised. And the most recent video that I posted on my uh, Facebook feed uh, is kind of a, a doctor slash scientist on that end of it, and he makes perfect sense the way he explains it on this. And this is total if you believe in evolution. Um, is part of the evolution process. We didn't always have, you know, like we're, we're walking around this earth and, you know, like 10,000 year old brains is what we're doing. And, and, and what's going on right now is just like totally creating o obesity, depression, uh, psychosis, um, you know, <laughs> all this crazy stuff because we just can't handle what's going on here. Our brains haven't caught up to it. It's too fast. Um, and, you know, back then, we didn't have this whole concept of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The whole breakfast, lunch, and dinner came from farmers, which is, you know, w well before what I'm talking about. Um, you know, we're talking hunter, hunters and gatherers. You know, they could eat, they'd easily go a day, a day and a half without any food. No problem. Just water on that. And then they may forge some roots and they may catch a rabbit or a deer or something like that. And they're going to feast. 
and then the cycle starts all over again. Now, do you think that evolution would set us up so that, you know, after you haven't eaten for 18 hours, that your body is going to burn away muscle? No, because then you'd be weaker and you couldn't survive and go out and hunt and forage, okay? Um, do you think it would, it would make you slow, your metabolism slower so you get fatter and your brain couldn't think as clearly? No, it's going to heighten your senses. Just try it out. I, I, I know for a fact that 100% of you on here have not gone 24 hours without food. I guarantee it, let alone 18 hours. 18 hours is just from the time you, you know, you go to bed at 10 and the time you wake and then you don't eat your first meal till like three or four o'clock in the afternoon. I guarantee you, you haven't done that before. If you have, it was by one day. It was on because you were like had a temperature of 110 or something. You're too sick to eat. Um, but if, if you just try it three or four days later, you're, you're, you're like, your brain is like hyper sharp. You're like, whoa, I'm so focused. What is going on? Um, and it gives your digestive system a chance to relax, and it makes sense. You haven't eaten for a while. Your body's going to be designed, designed to be smarter and more alert and more focused to hunt and kill. Okay? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up on here. It's been an hour and 40 minutes. My throat is getting really dry and stuff. If there's some question that you just it burning desire you just got to get it answered and you just can't live without it no worries uh, support at kazoo.com um, right after this my team will render this and get it posted up so we just say 24 hours or less and uh, we'll have an mp3 of it so you can listen to it on mp3 you can watch the full training or you can look at the slides on here so i'm going to thank everybody on here we had a, a really a, a huge number of people on the phone call on this end of it it's fantastic and uh, love to see that kind of stuff and that, that means we got a lot of actor active eager eager members on this end of it so you know a re remember on here your uh, awareness <laughs> you want to stay aware if you meditate okay just for two or three minutes in the morning and then immediately follow that would just read for 10 minutes with, with without being distracted on that end of it and it will really help train your mind to get refocused from all the distractions that we have. And then if you just eliminated wheat um, and, and fructose and sugars from your diet, you just, and, and you did the intermittent fast, and you'd just be so hyper-focused, you get so much done, it would be good on this end of it. And then remember your visions, your long-term vision. Stay focused on this. Success is a narrow road. It's not this wide road. It's not these multiple forks in the road. This week I'm doing this, and two days later when I'm driving down the road, I'm going to take exit 42. That's not what it is, folks. Stay focused on the long and narrow on this end of it. You're creating these lasting sites on here. You're gonna, we're gonna get into that later. You're gonna layer some paid advertising on top of this. It, it will totally crush it. But it's, it's, it, it's not an overnight thing. Look, what were overnight things that actually made money was Teespring. Teespring actually made money for a lot of people. But you don't hear. It's just like here today, gone tomorrow. What happened to that? Little lesson in that, by the way. Why did Teespring work for so many people? because it forced them to ex actually experiment. They could experiment for five or seven bucks and see if an ad worked. Oh yeah, it didn't work, but I can now split test. That's a whole nother discussion I'll get into later. Remember on that end of it, you know, you can have all the vision in the world, but without execution, it's hallucination on that of it. So uh, my name is Chris Winters. Glad you could do this call with me. Really appreciate your time, I value it. Um, I'll talk to you next week on the other call. Take care, bye-bye.